Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. Uh, my name is Sarah O. Oh. I am the digital content producer here at Yo People, and I am joined by, I'm sure all of you know, our president and founder, Shai. I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself to you all. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining, and thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm Shai Reshef. I'm the president of University of the People, and while you're students already, so I'm sure you know that uh, we are a um, nonprofit, tuition free, accredited online university, uh, helping those who want to have a, a degree that is uh, accessible, affordable, with the right quality. Uh, we are growing very fast. Uh, we are now one of the biggest universities in the US and uh, our plan is to continue growing, serving more students and uh, having better quality service as we grow. Yes. So, but I don't think I need to talk much because you had such an amazing question. So, you know, yes. we start there. <laughs> yes, I'm super excited to get into these questions. Special thank you to every single um, student ambassador of ours who submitted some of these questions. If you're not a student ambassador and you're interested in, you know, being a student ambassador for the university, please send an email to ambassadors at uopeople.edu. We love having students um, share the share the UO people mission with the entire world. I'm going to go ahead and get into our first question and special shout out to David Wilcox for this question. Um, he asked, will there be a mobile app for UO people? This is a great question that I was waiting to answer for actually quite a few years. <laughs> so I'm very happy to say that the answer is yes. We awesome. are going to have a mobile app. However, I don't know how long it will take us uh, before it will be out. And obviously, when it's out, it will take a few stages before it will be as great as we, we all want it to be. But uh, we are moving into introducing it. And the answer is that I'm very happy to say, yes, we are working on it and it will happen. That's awesome. And for those of you who have not visited yourpeople.edu, we have a brand new website. So it takes a lot of time, you know, to work out all of the kinks and make sure that everything is running smoothly for students. So just know that mobile uh, mobile app is in the works and we want to make sure that it is perfect before we roll it out to you all. And the next question is from Ibrahim Salamon. I apologize if I say anyone's name incorrectly. Where do you see your people in the next 10 years? Wow, that's a tough one. Yeah. Um, we are, you know, we are there to give an opportunity for those who need us. And right now, well, not right now, actually, years ago, UNESCO stated that in 2025, there will be 100 million people who are qualified to hire for higher education, uh, but do not have seats in the available universities that will be in there. This is actually... 2025 is around the corner. Yeah. Uh, we are there to build a model to show that uh, there is an opportunity for these students to study, that there is an opportunity to build an accessible and affordable university with the right quality and to serve all these people. Now, I'm not sure that we are going to serve all of them. Actually, I'm sure that we are not going to serve them. <laughs> But we are growing and growing and growing. And as I said before, we will continue growing and serving as many students as we can, unless until one day we'll wake up and see that all the students that are uh, out there are being served. And there is no need for us anymore. At that point, probably after waking up and realizing it, we'll go back to sleep and wake up with another dream. But uh, I think that we are going to continue growing and there are so many people who need us and continue serving as many students as we can. So the answer is, you know, as long as we can maintain the quality and as long as we can maintain giving good service to our students, we will continue to grow. So this is the answer for next year, five years from now and 10 years from now. That's awesome. Super excited about that. Um, we're growing already exponentially with over 120,000 students. So I'm excited to see where we'll be 10 years from now. And next question is by Akintoye Adewale. I was wondering if there are future plans to start PhD programs at UO People. 
Well, the answer is not at this point. Uh, we are concentrating on the degrees that are in much demand and are and will help our students to get a better job and by then having a better future for themselves, for their families, for their countries, and by extension for the entire world. So we are there to give many as much opportunities as we can for our students. So first of all, as you know, we only teach right now associate and bachelor degree in business administration, computer science, and health science, a master level programs in a health science, a, sorry, a master level programs in business administration, MBA, a master in education, and a master in IT. So we chose very carefully the degrees that we offer. Uh, also, it is important for us that the degrees that we offer uh, will be able to be taught online. Because if you need a degree that you need to, such as medicine, you want to be a doctor, you need to practice, you need to go to lab. Uh, since we cannot do it, we are not, we are not offering it. PhD is also one of those programs that in order to offer them, you need research in most cases, you need, um, you need uh, to have one-on-one -on -one uh, professor that uh, actually the professor will guide you through the process. Uh, so I do not think that it's feasible with our size, with our aspiration to serve so many as students to start offering PhD because I, I'm afraid that it will slow us down. Yeah. And there are so many people that need bachelor degree. So we need to serve them, giving the opportunity for higher education for those who had no other opportunity before we moving to, we moved already to master, but to PhD. Yeah. But you know what? Who knows? Maybe one day we feel differently. Someone will come yeah. and convince us that there is a way to do it and that's important for us to do. So maybe we will change our mind. That's awesome. Great answer. And we have another question from Hab, uh, Habtamu Abibi. Um, he says, thank you for having the chance or for giving me the chance to ask the president of your people. Um, their question is, what are the major challenges in the future for online universities in general and future changes in the future of your people in particular? I think it is, it is, it is a good question. Uh, you know, when I announced University of the People 13 years ago, actually, by now. The reaction was very skeptical. It was very skeptical, well, first, because people believe that education can be tuition-free, because we said that we are going to use volunteers, because we said that we will be accredited, and people say, no way, no way that university can be tuition-free and it will get accredited, and it will use volunteers. No way, it can't, it can't work. But I think that besides your people, uh, the questions, the skepticism about uh, your people that we all proved wrong, there was a main um, doubt, skepticism about online. The feeling was that online is, quote, not the real thing. The real thing is traditional universities. And we were on the margin and trying to prove the world that our education is as good as traditional education and that our, our graduates perform as good as, as graduates of traditional universities or even better because they know how to, how to work in teams. They, know how, they work with teams from around the world, so they are, they, the world for them is a global village. They know how to assess other people's work and get assessment. So they get so many, they are, they are motivated. Our students are very motivated, otherwise, and you should know it, otherwise you can't make it. And they are very well disciplined. Again, something that is very needed for the job market. But while saying all these people were still standing and say, wait a second, we are not sure. Then, surprise, surprise, COVID happened. Yeah. <laughs> the entire world of universities shut their doors and moved online. And guess what? They try to replicate what we do. Try to learn from us how to do it right because we have the experience. So it took us, it took us um, the COVID to convince the world that we are the right thing. And now it's amazing. 
70% of the students in the U.S. study at least partially online, if not fully. Right. Any university in the world, well, I hope that any, but if not <laughs> almost any university in the world, offer online courses and online degrees. So by now, from being on the margin, we became the, we became the main route. We became the standard. Right. So I think that online, not only that it is there to stay, it is going to be the largest part of higher education simply because online can offer the, flexibil the flexibility, the affordability that people need. Sure. You know, young people today do not want to wake up at six o'clock in the morning in order to be in class <laughs> at eight, listen to the professor that might be boring, that might speak very slowly and they have to sit there and listen. <laughs> they can wake up at 10 o'clock Listen to the video of the professor and maybe make it run twice. <laughs> you don't need to be bored. You know, the flexibility of online is amazing. And we know by now that the outcome is as good. So it's here to stay and it is to take a more and more part of higher education. Now, it is important to notice that it will not come instead of traditional universities because there are people who would prefer to be in a classroom. There are people who prefer hybrid, study online and offline. There are people who feel that the only way for them to study is when they see someone talking to them face to face. That's okay. So there will be those. But because of the flexibility, because, because online can be way cheaper than, than uh, offline, right. more and more people will go there. And we are the future. Definitely. That's a great point, Shai. And we have another question. Um, for those of you who may not know, we are accredited by the DEAC and we're also a candidate for accreditation through WAS. So that's super exciting for us. Um, this student asked, their name is Zoba Anwar Balak. When do you expect your people will be recognized regionally? Well, we applied to WASC, and WASC is a regional accreditation. Uh, we received, the first stage was eligibility. The second stage uh, is um, candidacy, where we are right now, and the final stage is accreditation. So we a uh, full, full accredi uh, accreditation. Uh, we are working on it. Uh, so we, have, we are working through the, through the different phases. Um, we're doing a lot of work because accreditation is a very, very complicated, very, very hard to require, very hard work in order to, to make it happen. It is a good, it is a good work because it forces you uh, to do a lot of things that you might have not, not do it otherwise, which is, which is great because it improves the service that you give to the student. You need to measure all your outcomes. You need to have all the right policies in place. So we're working along and uh, I can't guarantee the time that we will be accredited, but I hope soon. Yes. One thing I can promise is that the second we are accredited by Wask will come and scream. We are accredited. Yes. You will know. Don't worry. Yes. Make a whole announcement on all our social channels. And if you don't follow our social channels, make sure we have Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure to follow us on there to stay up to date with all of the amazing news and see all of the amazing students that attend. Yo, people just like you. And we have another question from Brittany Jackson. What's the best advice you can give to a student that wants to become an entrepreneur? This is a good a good question. You know, first of all, the best advice I can give to students as a whole is to make sure that you do your work, don't give up, and make sure that you complete each assignment, each week, each course, and each program and get the degree. Yeah. And I think that this is extremely important to mention because I know how hard it is. I know that studying with your people especially is hard because we have high quality and we are actually demand a lot from our students. So it is hard, but it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile because uh, if you do what you need to do and stick to this and don't give up in spite of the difficulties that you like anyone else have, a, and complete a degree, you will be one of these great winners. And then come entrepreneurship. Look, yes. I think that in order to be an entrepreneur, you need to have a dream. But have a dream is not enough. That's the precondition. Have a dream of what you want to do. Then plan it right. Study what it takes 
to make it happen. Think about all the difficulties that you might encounter along the way. Because, you know, when you launch a new pro program, a new project, a new, a new anything, you will encounter um, difficulties. You know, when I thought about your people and I started your people, I was entrepreneur by, by definition doing it. The question always was and still is in my mind, what is going to go wrong? Think about what is going to go wrong and plan for it. Because if it doesn't happen, who cares? Great. If it happens, you are prepared for it. So that's the secret. That's my secret. So always be afraid that something is going wrong. Yes. Be prepared for it. Uh, the second thing, and that's like being a student with you people. Never give up. Right. Because life is not easy. Life is fun if you if you do it right, but it's not easy. And you should always stick to your dream. And when things, when people say it would not work, like I mentioned about the skepticism about you people, your answer should be, I will show you that I'm right and you are wrong. Right. So don't give up and stick with your dreams. That's awesome. Yeah. And you're learning the skills you need to as an entrepreneur, the flexibility, managing your own time, all the things that you're going to use as a your people student, you can definitely use as an entrepreneur. So don't give up, finish your degree, earn it from the University of the People, and you're going to be fully prepared to run your own business or run your own company one day. And we have another question from Victoria Choi. Um, will there be more programs or degrees offered in the future? And will there be a program related to the metaverse? Well, uh, I don't know. Um, the, the honest and fair answer is that we are very picky about offering our programs, which, which are our uh, next program. And the reason for that is, and I mentioned it um, in, in one of my previous answers, is that we want to make sure that we only offer the degrees that are relevant for people to succeed in their life and they are in high demand. So if someone will come to us and say, why don't you offer a degree in archaeology? Well, I admire people who study archaeology. This is not a program that are likely to help our students find a better job in their future. And therefore, we are not going to offer it. So we started slowly, slowly. We started with business administration and computer science because they were in high demand and because we knew how this program can be fully online. There were two other programs that we thought that are even more in demand, that the world need them even more, which are health science and education. But we didn't see a way to, uh, to offer them because medicine, you know, I mentioned it, we can teach it online, how to become doctors and the, or nurses. And the same goes to education because every country requires its teachers to go through local um, licensing and local material to study in order to, to get into the classes. Okay. Not until someone came to us and say, why don't you offer a degree in health science, which is actually for health workers, or it's for practitioners such as nurses in some countries who become practitioners with our proper academic education, and they come to us to enhance their education. Right. So that's why we decided, wait a second, and there are demand for health workers, millions around the world. Um, the, the, the shortage is, is unbelievable. So right. we decided to launch it. And then the IB, the International Baccalaureate, came to us and said, why don't you offer master in education? So let's take already teachers or people with BA to be that want to become teachers and teach them with us to be qualified to become teachers and to become IB teachers. And for those of you who are not from our uh, Master in Education program, uh, maybe you don't know, but the IB is a very prestigious institution. Most of the international, most if not all the international schools use the, the baccalaureate system for their graduation. So we decided with them to de develop the program. Then we realized that there is a very a strong demand for IT professionals. Yeah. So we decided to, uh, to develop a master in IT 
together with MBA, which was obviously came as a very strong demand from our students. So that's the degrees that we developed. Later on, uh, we also uh, developed a BA in Arabic. Right. Uh, now, the two conditions for us to develop is, first of all, that there will be a very strong demand. But second, that uh, we will have a sponsor for them. And all the programs that I mentioned were sponsored by um, donors, generous donors who help us uh, do that. So will we develop in the future other programs? We might. We are not, we haven't started developing any new programs, so I can't talk about any program that uh, we are developing. Right. But we might develop more, more programs. But the idea is we are not a university that want to offer 100, 200 degrees and have small cohort of students studying each program. We want big, uh, massive programs that will serve as many people as possible. Um, so... We might in the future. Um, yeah. We'll see. Yes, that's awesome. And we have another question from Owusu Lambard. Uh, sir, I want to know if by any chance we will have a face-to-face -face graduation ceremony or if we can do it on a country's basis. Thank you for the reply in advance. Graduation ceremony? That was the yes. question? Yes, yes. Well, this is a tough question that uh, we getting we getting a lot. Yeah. Uh, we had one graduation ceremony in our history in 2019 after 10 years of existence. Uh -huh. uh, we did it in New York. However, it was virtual graduation ceremony. It yeah. was animated. I think it was an amazing uh, graduation ceremony. We got a lot of universities who called us afterwards to see how we did it, how we made it happen. And we basically, it was a, an animation of graduation a ceremony with the, all the faculty embodied in it and me speaking, kind of moving from animation to live. It was a, it was a very good one. And we actually scrolled the names of all the graduates. Uh, and we invited the graduates who wanted to join us in New York to join in New York, even though there was there was no difference if you were watching the video in New York in the one room where I was as well, or you were at home in uh, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Sudan, or uh, Kashmir. I'm just making up names. Uh, saying that, I don't know. You need to understand, as our students, we are successful because we do only the things that we have to do. Right. We give you great education. We don't give you much beyond that. You know, many universities are proud of having football team, soccer team, basketball team. This is great. Someone pays for it. In our case, we don't have anyone that pays for it, and we don't want anyone to pay for it, because if someone is willing to give us donation, we want to accommodate, to open the gates even more, and to yeah. offer to offer our, our program to more students. So there are limits to what we do. You know, psychological help is very important. Yeah. We can't afford offering it. So you get great education from new people, you don't get much beyond that. And graduation ceremony is one of those things. So, you know, people need to work on it. People need to prepare it. It costs a lot of money. And right. you know, I know that the, the answer that I'm getting will make it happen. Right. Don't worry, we'll do it all. Well, it doesn't work this way. Because every time anyone uses our name, we need to make sure that our name was used properly that nothing was done, nothing according to what we're supposed to do. Graduation has, a, has a, a protocol that needs to be followed. We need to monitor it. Everything costs money. Uh, so we are uh, trying to prevent from any expense uh, that is not, uh, is not mandatory, even though, yes, I do appreciate the fact that after you studied uh, two years for associate or even less for a master degree or, or four years for bachelor degree. You want a ceremony to bring your family. That's one of the prices of you people. Maybe again, 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 maybe one day 
uh, we will launch uh, another ceremony for one or more but uh, right now i cannot promise uh, i cannot promise it to happen neither where or when meaning right. where in which countries or when <laughs> Right, understandable. And like Shai said, we've had virtual ceremonies before, so maybe we can consider doing that for next year. It just takes a lot of time, a lot of planning, um, and we want you guys to know that we're hearing you and we're trying our best to accommodate, but the main focus is education, making sure you earn your degree and have that high quality instructor and high quality learning throughout your years at University of the People. And another person asked, I apologize if I do not say your name right, Antaresti Gadima. What is your biggest challenge as a leader? My biggest challenge as a leader is to stop having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. No, I, I have to admit that uh, I work more hours than I ever worked in my life. But I don't think that I've ever done anything in my life that was nearly as, satisfac as satisfactory as what I'm doing right now. So I'm, I'm working many hours a day, but, but I'm enjoying it. I think that um, as a leader, first of all, I'm not alone. Right. Uh, the university has a lot of people, whether they are volunteers or whether they are uh, our employees uh, that are doing the work, I'm not alone. I'm just there to see how things are being developed and maybe lead them, but not, not do them. I think that as a leader of the university, the challenge uh, that I have is twofold. First, uh, to make sure that we read the future correctly, where the world is heading, what's the, what, what things we need to look at uh, externally, but also internally. And I mentioned, I mentioned earlier when I was asked about uh, being an entrepreneur and um, how it is to be an entrepreneur and what to look. And I said, look at, at uh, what might go wrong. And that's what I do every day. Meaning, is our platform strong enough to serve the amount of students that we have? Do we have enough instructors? Are they in a good quality, in good, good enough quality? Do we have enough services given to the students and, and are the service that we have enough people and it's the right, the right level? So it's always, always a, a challenge to uh, make sure that you are on top of things and always, uh, me as a leader, uh, look at, um, uh, at the future and see if you're prepared. I think that any, any fast-growing company the main challenge for their leaders is to manage the growth. And managing the growth is exactly what, uh, what, what I mentioned. Uh, what kind of new positions do we need to look at? What do we need to do that we don't do? I think that also what goes with it is to look at the people who are with you, uh, whether they are volunteers or employees, and make sure that they are fully aligned with the mission and not only that they feel that they are appreciated for the work that they do. And remember, we are doing an amazing work with very few people. Yeah. We are very short. We are always short on, a, on manpower. So the people who do the work are doing an amazing job, but they're always under pressure. You need to make sure as a leader that they get the help that they need and they always feel appreciated. You know what? The same goes to our students. We always try to learn why, why students are satisfied or why they are not. And if they are not satisfied, to try to help them, but moreover, learn if there are things that we should improve in order to make our students' journey um, more enjoyable, more satisfactory, and to make sure that the majority of them stay with us and complete a degree. And as I mentioned before, uh, when you are a student, that you are a new student in general, but definitely new people, and most of our students are working adults. Most, many of our students, the majority are parents for kids, our first generation students. You are people who sometimes need help, but in most cases, 
Life gets in your way while, while you're studying. Yeah. How are we helping you both to serve you better, but at the same time to help you if you have personal difficulties that we can we can help you with? So I guess that as a leader, you need to see that all this component of this uh, big machine yeah. uh, is working is working well, and we do a good job. And I think that uh, you know, from what I hear from you, when we do our survey. Uh, you feel that we do a good job, so yeah. yeah. Yes, I think a lot of students. Um, thank you to everyone who's been responding in the chat, saying a lot of positive things. We really appreciate every single one of you for being here with us today, and for those student ambassadors who are asking questions. We have a few more questions, so hang tight. Um, I have a question from Ngazi Njoku. Um, she asks, um, I've seen the amount students pay for courses now, and she would like to ask if the price will stay the same in the future. A, any futuristic question is a tough one. Who knows exactly. what will happen? <laughs> exactly. The one thing I can, I can guarantee is that, um, you know, there was a survey of uh, all the states in the US who is the most expensive university in, that, in each state and who is the least expensive. So we checked ourselves and we are, <laughs> we are the least expensive university anywhere in the US. Wow. But, but that's, not, that's not a surprise because we are tuition free and right. we are obviously, uh, we are ultra low cost. As you know, we expect the students to pay 120 US dollars for each end of course assessment in bachelor and 300 in a master degree. It is definitely our um, intention to always be the least expensive university, the best opportunity for, for by any by any measure of each university uh, compared to any university in the US uh, because I think and, and, and I will say it again our goal is not only to serve um, as many students as, as we can but to build a model that other can replicate because we argue and we show that higher education can be accessible and affordable to all with the right quality right in order to show others, we should show them that with our prices, we are sustainable. Will it be exactly the same price? I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't guarantee it. But I, I am saying that it is our intention to always be the least expensive university in the U.S., by the way, uh, which is important because when we started um, the program, before it was, now it's 120, it used to be 100 right. for each end of course assessment fees. Uh, we adjusted it after 10 years because to make it actually to adjust it to the inflation. Right. So we didn't actually increase our, pl our price, we just adjusted it. But what is important, and it is important for you as a student even more, that we grandfather the price to all of our existing students. So if the price will ever go up, you as existing students will stay with the same the same pricing. That's so awesome. this is important. So if you ask the question for your fellow students, for your friends that might want to join us in the future, as I said, I don't know what the price will be. If you ask it for yourself, I can guarantee that whatever you pay now, you will pay in the future. That's awesome. And don't forget, for those of you who might struggle with paying the minimal fees that we have, we do offer scholarships. So just reach out to your program advisor and let them know, and they'll be able to direct you to where you can get some extra funding for any of your undergraduate courses. And we have another question from Kennedy Oshimo, um, Oshioma. They said, Dear President, is the UO People Certificate recognized outside of the United States? Well, just a clarification. Uh, I guess that the question relates to our degree, not to certificates, because University of the People are now <coughs> is now offering certificates yeah. as well. 
for students who want to take only a few courses, get a certificate for the job market, and maybe later convert and come to us and continue toward the degree. Right. I guess this is not the question, but whether our degree is recognized in, in other countries. Well, I cannot answer this question because it's up to the to the receiving country. Right. Uh, so when you apply to any other university, uh, they will go and you. they will tell you if our degree is recognized there as well. I cannot talk on, on their behalf. Right. I would just say that, you know, we are an American university and American higher education can be the golden standard of higher education. And everyone respect American degree. And as such, we have students all over the world to study with us. By the way, the overwhelming majority of our students are obviously not from the US, even though we are an American university, but they're from all over the world. Uh, many of our students continue to graduate school all over the world. They find jobs all over the world. Uh, I know that there are some countries that simply because our students told us that they go to the Ministry of Education with our degree, they check that we are accredited in the US and therefore they get the accreditation as well. But you need to check for yourself in any country that uh, you are there. We are not going through a, a accreditation process in any country outside of the US, uh, simply because there are 200 countries and <laughs> we don't have the resources to go through the process 200 times. And we do know that the American degrees so uh, appreciated all over the world. We feel that uh, for most of our students, if not all of them, it serves them very well uh, to have a American degree. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shai. And we have a whole bunch of questions left, but I'm only going to ask you one more because I know you are a super busy president with a whole bunch of meetings to get through today. Um, our last question is from Dania Al-Saad. Are there any possible future collaborations between you of people and other companies for better job opportunities after graduation? I like the question. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, a question that I can be positive and give a full yes. answer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, <a> great help. <laughs> the answer is yes, definitely yes. We have a um, career service center that offer our students um, offer our students um, courses to prepare them for the job market, uh, such as how to write uh, your CV how to find a job, how to get in, how to get interviewed. So actually, actually, we have courses in the, our career service center uh, to prepare our students for the job market. You are more than welcome uh, to go to our website, find it and join the courses. I mean, they are uh, for all of our students, they are free and uh, they, are, they are very important because uh, we learn from the students who did it, how uh, powerful they were for them in the search for career. In addition to that, we started working with companies to uh, offer uh, job opportunities to our students. Now, it's, it's a little bit challenging because we have students from 200 countries. So if we find a, a company in Guatemala that is willing to hire our graduates, this is great but for our students in Guatemala. It will not help all of our students, moreover, we have a preference for online jobs because then all of our students can get them. And in many cases, uh, students look for a job, but they cannot relocate or have a hard time find, uh, getting visa. So check there. Uh, we are working with companies. Uh, we are now actually expanding this department. So we will have more and more opportunities uh, from companies to uh, hire our graduates whether it is internship, whether it is mentorship, or whether it is job opportunities. Uh, all I can say, go there and uh, you will see what we have. And you will see as we keep uh, having more companies, you will, you will find them as well. Yes, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Shai, for all of those um, great answers. And thank you to every single one of our student ambassadors who submitted their questions um, for Shai to answer today. Is there anything else that you want to leave um, the amazing students that are with us here today? Any advice, any uh, final words before we end this awesome webinar? Well, 
Uh, yeah. So first of all, thank you for coming. I see that you have over 800 people on this uh, call. Wow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for coming and give it's like really an honor uh, to have so many students. Uh, second, um, I said and I'll say it again, never give up. If you have any difficulty, approach your program advisor. Come and try to get help. Approach your instructors. Try to get help. Try not to give up. You're here with a reason. You made a, a decision to get a degree. Don't give up because it's slightly become, or even not slightly, because it become hard. Yeah. Because eventually, if you give up, you will be one of those who come to me after a few years and say, I'm so sorry that I gave up. I should have stayed with you. Well, don't be one of them. Stick and, and graduate, and it's something that you will carry with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. I would also say, and we have a lot of ambassadors here, I would like to thank you personally for being ambassadors of your people. We are not a rich university, but we did reach over 120,000 students. Yeah. We got there because of you, because you spread the word about the university. There are 100 million people who need our services. They don't know about us. And we are unable to go and spend $100 million on advertisement so they will know about us. The way for us to spread the word, the way for us to build our reputation and spread the word to those who need us is through your work. So I can't thank you enough for, for your help. And the more you do, the more thankful I will be for yes. all your help. Um, one last thing, if there is any question that uh, we haven't answered, uh, please feel free to reach out and uh, I promise to answer any question. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes, thank you all so much. I hope you all have a great start to your new term in this new academic year. Um, and thank you again, Shai, for um, spending some time with all of us today. Thank you. No problem. Bye, everyone. Bye.